Hey YouTubers, I'm here to do a review today on a headphone amplifier from iFi called the ICAN SE. This is a nice little headphone amp. They um, sent me this quite a while ago. It's a little embarrassing. Was, uh, I think it was before Thanksgiving of last year. Uh, and I'm finally getting around to producing my video about it. Um, I've been using it during all that time for a variety of things, listening to music obviously, but also um, editing video and that sort of thing and uh, it's worked out really well for me. Now this doesn't have a built-in DAC so you're going to need to bring your own DAC or just use your computer's built-in sound card or whatever other analog source you have. The TLDR on this thing is, I like it. Uh, I think it provides good value for the money, uh, very good sounding and compatible with pretty much anything. Let's dig into the specs on this thing. First off, it uh, offers selectable gain, so that'll allow you to get the, uh, the volume to where you need it. I left the gain where it was. Um, it worked fine with all the headphones that I tried with it. We'll get into that in a moment. It offers up to 4,000 milliwatts of power, depending on the impedance of the headphone that you use with it. So it's got plenty of power. It's got low output impedance, which allows it to mate very nicely with just about any impedance headphone you can imagine. Now this combination of power and output impedance makes it compatible, I would say, with about any headphone that's out there. So moving past specifications, let's talk a bit about features. First off, uh, it's made of high quality components. Uh, it's an all analog device. iFi has implemented a few special features in this amplifier. Um, I'm going to read them off now. Uh, so it's a Class A amplifier and it uses a technology they call tube state. I believe that means that it's supposed to uh, offer a tube-like response. I didn't really notice anything in listening uh, that made it sound especially tubey, um, but I also didn't notice any uh, detriment to the sound either. Uh, it offers a bass extension technology called X-Bass. It offers another technology, to, uh, something like crossfade. They call it 3D. Uh, it's got turbo technology. I'm sure Porsche will love their use of the script. Um, but the uh, turbo technology is what's behind the high power output of the amp. And then the outputs are direct coupled, whatever that means. I'm not an electrical engineer. All I know is the thing works well. Let's talk a bit more about the 3D circuit. Um, what that is supposed to give you is um, a little nicer imaging than your usual experience in a headphone. Uh, oftentimes you put on your headphones and uh, the sounds are balanced way out to the sides and it feels a little unnatural. Some people find it uncomfortable. It doesn't bother me all that much except when it comes to old school stereo recordings where they've been really hard panned out to the sides like you've heard them. Old Beatles recordings for example. They may have the drums hard over here and the bass hard over here. Um, it just sounds weird and uh, it's a little disturbing to listen to. I find that circuits like this, they're usually called crossfeed circuits, and I'm sure I'll keep calling it crossfeed in the video. Um, they try to reduce the effects of that by feeding a little bit of the opposite signal uh, across the channels. And it tends to work pretty well, but it also tends to have some small uh, effect on the sound. They offer two settings for this 3D or crossfeed effect. The first, as I understand it, is for traditional crossfeed use. The second, they describe in the manual, is uh, basically to be used with flatter recordings, maybe mono. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Okay, so my listening methodology while I was uh, checking out the amp was to compare it against my Grace uh, M9XX, which is a mass drop special headphone amp and DAC combined. Um, I used the Grace's analog outputs with the ICANN SE and uh, sort of was able to AB the two um, using the Grace's DAC, which is a really high-end DAC. Uh, but I also used it with uh, Shit Modi um, version 1 and uh, it did well in both cases. In terms of the headphones I plugged into this thing, I'm kind of a biodynamic freak, so I ran it with my DT1770s my DT770s, my DT250s, and my AutoZ LCD2s. The amp mated well with all of those headphones, no problem at all. Uh, I never had to push it over 12 o'clock, 12.30 in terms of the volume control. 
My overall impression when compared to the Grace uh, is that it compared very well in terms of headphone amp performance. So let's talk a little bit about the 3D circuit. Uh, I listened extensively switching this circuit in and out. I pretty much stuck to the first setting, uh, except for a little bit of experimentation with the second setting. And that works, like, as I've been talking about, very much like a standard crossfeed. And it worked really well. I discovered that it didn't seem to color the sound as much as maybe my Grace's crossfeed circuit does. To be specific, the Beatles' Piggies recording off the White Album uh, has a real punchy bass in it. And uh, I felt like on the Grace, when I had crossfeed in, uh, the bass line would uh, sort of lose its initial punchy transient. It wasn't horrible, but when I compared it to the ICANN, uh, I could tell that that transient was still there, so the, the bass line retained its punch. I also listened to uh, a recording from Rodriguez, Cold Fact. Uh, side note, if you haven't heard of this guy, there's a movie you've got to check out, and I'll put the movie's name in the description. Um, I listened to Cold Fact, and it's another one of those hard-panned old stereo recordings, and it was made a lot more listenable by the use of the crossfeed or 3D circuit in the ICANN. Now this 3D circuit isn't only useful on hard panned old stereo recordings. Um, it gives you a more natural presentation on modern stuff too, although it varies according to the source and how it was recorded and so forth. So I listened to Yes's Tales from Topographic Oceans, which is not a bad stereo mix, uh, although it is an older recording. And it had the interesting effect of almost sounding like an expander, like uh, uh, it's a fairly flat recording even though the mix is okay, but it got a little rounder and, and uh, it felt like the dynamics were improved, which kind of surprised me. Uh, so I found that interesting. Uh, Philip Selway's Familial, which is a modern recording, it got a much rounder presentation. I don't know how else to describe it, but it, there was a positive impact there as well. But then take um, Gorilla's Demon Days, I couldn't hear any difference with the circuit in or out. So it really seems to be material dependent. Um, so your mileage will vary. I feel like, you know, 90% of the time you're going to be able to hear a difference and you'll probably like the effect. So that was all 3D setting one. I tried 3D setting two a bit and that seems to be geared more towards mono or uh, very flat recordings. Uh, my primary impression of this was it seemed to have um, equalization or EQ effect. Um, so it kind of opened up the highs a bit. Uh, I listened to Keith Jarrett's Bop B, which is a very flat uh, recording, although it is in stereo. Um, and it, it seemed to open up a bit, but it really felt like just more high uh, frequency energy. Uh, Miles Davis' Jazz in Paris, which has a lot of hiss on it, that actually gained some spatial qualities, but it more felt like the hiss was kind of being placed out of phase. So it kind of seemed to move outside a little bit, but it was still a mono recording, obviously. Uh, so again, uh, that recording has a lot of hiss, so it feels like the circuit was working with the hiss. Then I tried it with the Beatles, Please Please Me, and um, I couldn't really tell any difference at all. Interestingly, uh, that recording is uh, very quiet in terms of hiss. So um, again, I, I feel like it's almost like an EQ effect, and if there's any uh, high frequency energy, it will kind of enhance that. So moving on to the x bass. Uh, circuit. I found it to be extremely effective, but I'm not a bass head. I, I personally want my bass to be balanced. So when I think of this circuit, for my purposes, I think of it as a way to make bass shy recordings have a little bit more bass in them. Or you could, if the headphones will handle it, uh, make a bass shy headphone produce a little more bass. So setting one uh, is pretty much where I stayed when I was testing this. Setting two is a bit heavy for me, especially given the headphones that I use. Um, so again, this is your mileage may vary. It may turn out that you love this circuit and you use it all the time. I will say it was effective. It didn't make um, the recording sound muddy at all. It definitely enhanced the bass and didn't really bother the treble or mid-range uh, in my listening. So let's get into my likes and dislikes. First off, it's a nicely made unit. It's all metal. The small frontal area doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, it kind of depends on how your desk is laid out. It's a long unit as opposed to a wide unit, so it takes up a bit of depth. I found the crossfade 
circuit to be very effective and actually to have less negative effect on the signal than my Grace M9XX, at least in my listening. And the X-Base circuit, as I was just talking about, works very well. I didn't tend to use it much in my listening, but you may find it to be extremely useful. In terms of dislikes, uh, the markings on the front of the unit were pretty hard to read. It's a silver unit, or at least mine is. I don't know if they make other colors. Um, the uh, silk screening is kind of a gray color on silver, and it was really hard to read, so I, I would have to tilt the unit up in order to be able to see um, you know, the silk screening and, and know what I was doing. And speaking about that stuff, the off um, and setting one and setting two were different between the X-Base and the 3D features. So I was always having to look at the silk screening to make sure I was in setting one of, the, of either of those circuits. And this may seem a little odd. A heavier unit might be nicer. Um, the unit's very light, even though it's made of all metal. It's really small. Uh, you know, it doesn't have a lot of volume. They included some rubber feet with it, but this is not my unit. It's a loner, so I didn't want to change it in any way. You'll want those rubber feet. Um, but I found myself wishing the unit was a little bit heavier because it would kind of slide around on the desk. But again, rubber feet. In conclusion, I really enjoyed my time with this unit. Um, the specs are excellent. Uh, it performed well with all the headphones I have, and I believe it will perform well with any headphone out there except for extreme oddballs. Um, the additional circuitry is interesting and useful. The price isn't too high, so what do you got to lose? At least check it out. So that's it for my review. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Comments down here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.